A Course of Experimental Philosophy by J.T. Desaguliers, Fellow of the Royal Society, Chaplain to His Grace the Duke of Chandos. As the greatest part of my auditors, at whose desire I have printed this course, are but little versed in mathematical sciences, the lectures are free from difficult geometrical demonstrations and algebraical calculations, and the same thing is often proved by several experiments, that where one does not immediately strike with a clear conviction, another may. I only require attention and common sense with a very little arithmetic in my readers to qualify them for understanding these lectures, provided they begin the first lecture and go on regularly that they may advance from the easiest truths to those more complex ones, which are deduced from them. For otherwise, many things may seem difficult to a person who should open the book at random, especially great part of the last lecture of this volume, which yet may be clearly understood by all who have made themselves masters of what goes before. Perhaps the mathematicians may think me tedious and verbose in my lectures, but such of them as have been used to teach know very well that one cannot be too plain and explicit with those that are not born with a genius for mathematics, whatever good understanding they are otherwise endowed with. Nay, sometimes one must make use of such ways of demonstrating as are not mathematically true, to prepare them for what is a little more abstract. As I have often been forced to do a large audience, where close attention is not very common. But I hope the rigid philosophers will forgive me, when they find the same things geometrically demonstrated in the annotations, in the perusal of which the mathematicians perhaps will not think their time wholly lost. However, I don't mean to exclude common readers from the notes, for those that have carefully read and understood the lectures will thereby be qualified for comprehending what is in the annotations. To prevent the public from being imposed upon, I must not omit mentioning that several years ago, some persons published a book of experimental philosophy in my name without my knowledge which they endeavoured to pass upon the world for my lectures. It is a thing called her, and was at the time called a system of natural philosophy. And as those who were capable of such a thing may very probably, if they have any of the books left, endeavour to sell them by giving them the same title as my book, I thought proper I give this caution. But while I am complaining of others, I might be thought to ascribe to myself what is not my own if I did not acknowledge that of most of what I have said of the bow and spring in the last lecture of this volume, as also part of what I have said of the fly and the battering ram, was copied from some papers lent me by William Jones Esquire. <laughs>